Hey YouTube, this is Southern Proper One. This video is made because Kentucky Girl had a question. Uh, her question was her husband is working away from the house and what is a good way to get home, a plan. So let's say he's about three or four hours away. I think he works at different locations in that area and it's roughly 200 to 300 miles away. So that's a legitimate concern in today's environment. How is my husband gonna get home? Uh, we definitely need a plan. The, the wife and the husband need to be on the same piece of paper so they can implement this plan with the least amount of worries because trust me, it'll be a lot of worries, especially if uh, cell phones go down, uh, he can't travel with his vehicle, uh, so many worries. So the better plan uh, will alleviate some of that worries. First of all, what shape are you in? Uh, and that goes to everybody. If you have problems walking one mile, you're probably not gonna be successful two to 300 mile walk. So your plan's gonna be, have to be made for you. Um, it's not one size fits all on these. So if you're not in good shape, figure out first, go to a doctor. If you've got any concerns about your health, get to a doctor so he can uh, try to alleviate some of these problems um, and get you on an exercise plan. If you're not exercising already, two to 300 miles is gonna be hard. So get in shape. Next best thing to do is get a map book one of the big atlas of your state because it will show in so much detail everything topographical uh, that should be in your vehicle no matter what next for whatever particular state buy one of these these are the whole state the reason is keep this on your person either in a fanny pack or uh, something else in your pocket and then put your bigger one in your get home bag. The reason is you could get robbed very easily during these uh, crazy times. And at least if you have something on your person, and I'm gonna talk more about that, you need maps, because you might have to change your route. You might have to uh, try to get home. But it, it goes back to, how am I gonna get home? It goes back to route recon. We do this in the military all the time. Route recon, some of the time it's only map recon where we're looking at the map, uh, figuring it out because we're going into enemy territory that we don't have information on but in this case you know where you're gonna be and how you need to get home so you can do route recon if you're a traveling salesman or you do a lot of traveling anytime you're out right now you need to be starting making a list of food supplies uh, you might pass an area that has a lot of fruit trees now granted there's a morale issue of you stealing their fruit I understand that but there might be a, an issue where there's some uh, and fruit that's available that's not really um, on someone else's property it could be on you know, government property it could be alongside the road there's a lot of things you can look for especially with water in your everyday travels right now if you know you might have to bug bug out from work back to home you need to be marking everywhere that, where you can get water be it potable water or be it water that you can purify yourself very important you need to be listing everything all right if you are in one location and you have to get home and it's a far distance it's so much easier than if you are a traveling person dealing with a lot of places because you could be a hundred miles here and by afternoon you could be another hundred miles over here but if you're from a, one location to another location what you need to do is get a route red white and blue red white and blue um, <clears throat> that way if you do have to go home you can look at everything that's out there and you can make a decision. That way, if you do communicate home, you don't have to say, well, honey, I'm gonna take Route 47 up the road 39 over to this road. No, red, white, and blue, all you can do, because it might only be text are available or someone else might be sending that message. So you can just basically route red, route white, route blue. Uh, that way the other person knows immediately you're not given a bunch of numbers it's very important if you're relaying this through someone else, and I'll talk about that later. Uh, easy to make mistakes. Communicate your location. Um, your wife or significant other needs to know where you are at all times. Uh, it's very important. So if you're traveling from point A to point B to see another customer, you need to just send her a text. Boom, boom, boom. So she knows, or he knows. Uh, your location needs to be communicated to your loved ones. Next, you need to look at your where you're going to be, friends and relatives. Make sure you know where their houses are. Um, 
because they can give you shelter, they can give you supplies, they might be able to spare a gallon of gas for your vehicle. Very important. What X, uh, what uh, friendlies are there from point A to B to get home? Very important because you need to use those. You might have to leave some supplies at a relative's house. You could leave another small little duffel bag with a few things in there, socks, a pair of underwear, a little bit of food, um, whatever you think, a couple extra batteries. It doesn't cost much. You could probably scrounge it up at your house. It won't cost you nothing. If you've got a good friend or relatives, this is huge. Stock some supplies for you there. Maybe a few MREs. Um, most friends and relatives would gladly share, but it's a lot nicer not to have to share. You can just get your little bag, spend the night there, and then keep moving. Also, if you work for a company, maybe they have uh, different locations in that general area. Maybe you don't deal with those locations because you might be in charge of sales, and that's a manufacturing plant, so you might not you know, go over there. But find out, is there other locations of my company uh, that I could use? Um, maybe customers um, maybe they you got customers in the area that could give you some uh, shelter give you a little bit of water very important where is my resources going to come from now you also have the resources of the stores there could be a Walmart they could be a Dollar General they could be a, a service station uh, but in worst case event if banking is down or the power grids down and they're not doing business it's gonna be hard to get things there Make sure you write down phone numbers, addresses of anybody you need. Don't rely on your cell phone. Don't rely on that information being in there because any second you could drop that phone. Uh, someone could steal your phone. And all that valuable information is gone. So if you have it written down on a piece of paper, it's going to very much help you. Now be careful. In, in a worst case event, as in the military, the military, you know, you don't put sensitive information down and then take it into the field. Um, so you might want to do some type of not doing the full address or don't put the house number down if you just need the street address because you'll know when you get there, oh, that's Joe's house. So be very careful uh, with other people's um, OPSEC security. But write it down. This is a huge, huge thing. Make two copies. Put one in your bag and put some one in your office or something. Valuables. All right, let's say you're traveling for business and... EMP goes off or something catastrophic, a massive earthquake, roads are impassable. Hopefully you have a bunch of stuff in your vehicle. You have your get home bag. I will do a separate video, Kentucky Girl, just for you on what I would do if I was in your situation and had to travel that. What would my bag look like in the condition I am in now? You might have to modify it, um, but <clears throat> valuables left in the car. If I were you, I'd have some extras that I'm not planning on walking out with. Because you might be stranded a day, and instead of using the stuff that you're needing to get home, you can use that extra little bit of food and water for that day you're just in limbo. Um, if you leave your vehicle, don't leave your bags or other supplies readily available. Take it. Spare tire. Sometimes under the spare tire uh, in that area, you could throw a little bit of your food, some power bars, some granola bars, a few bottles of water, and then cover it up. Now, if your tire's underneath the vehicle, you, you might be able to do something there. So that way, if someone busts into the glass, busts into your trunk, hopefully they won't find something because it's no guarantee that you can keep moving forward. You might move forward and find that you've come into a huge problem and, and you need to backtrack. And in the process of backtracking, you come close to your car. If you know you have a little extra supplies in there, you could stop there, grab that extra supplies uh, because your route has changed and probably your supplies are used up quicker. So make sure you guard whatever you have uh, in your vehicle so it won't be stolen. Uh, empty gas can. I don't recommend carrying a couple gallons of gas in your trunk while you're driving around. I do recommend a gas can. If you have not a lot of stuff in your trunk, there's no reason why you can't throw a brand new five gallon gas can in your trunk. Um, and that would be very vital because it might be where you can get home, but you can't get gas. But you might be able to get gas at a service station uh, that still has it or where you work. They might have fuel on site where you can ask to get a few gallons of gas to get you home. Um, shoes. You might be in a three-piece suit, you might be dressed really nice, and the shoes you wear every day for work are not walking shoes. 
you better have a pair of good shoes in there not a brand new pair you need to put them on and walk break those things in so you feel very comfortable in them you're also going to need a get home bag i'm going to do a video on that i i, I have a great get home bag for me uh, I'm blessed. I, I'm really not uh, traveling every day far. Uh, if I do go far, I throw my bag in my vehicle so I have it. Next is a message drop point. Worst case event. You might have some locations. As you pass through that locations, uh, so if you're on Route White, you have a couple spots. You will leave a message there for your uh, loved ones. You could do it in a bottle, anything, but it's a, a spot that you all know where it is. And you'll write a quick where you're going, what you're doing, how you're feeling, what supplies you have left, uh, your intentions. Seal that up and put it there. Because worst case, um, if, if you don't show up, at least if they come out and look for you, and that's if you have that plan, um, if they get to that location and find that thing, uh, they'll know, you. hey, you made it this far. It will definitely uh, help them find you. Uh, link up spots. You want a couple link up spots because as you're traveling, you could break an ankle, you could get seriously hurt. Maybe you can get it to a link up spot. Um, if not, you're gonna have to try to uh, figure out how to get a message to them if you can't walk. But if you can get to a link up spot, basically do not go use numbers because if you're giving this information across someone else that's related to to your loved ones by ham or by other means don't say I'm at point one I am point seven I'm at link up nine because mistakes can happen at link up did he say nine or did he say eight or did he say seven I don't know that would be a huge problem so just use words if your link up spot is near a big mall or something just say a link up mall or if you're near a lake that you you all know that's link I'm at lake I'm at the meetup lake link up lake um, so much easier less confusion if it's relayed by other people what is that link up spot that link up spot needs to have some water close by so you can keep refreshing you can go a long time if you got good clean water that you can purify um, it's a huge blessing plus you can wash you can do so much water usually means maybe a little bit of fishing it needs to be out of the natural line of drift. Big, big, big. Natural line of drift. What's the natural line of drift, you're saying? If someone was walking, and they're tired and exhausted, and they're walking, and the earth is going to take them, the terrain's going to take them, that's where you don't want to be because you could get people just moving through, trying to be uh, lazy as possible, and they run into you. That is a no-no. You do not want that. You don't want anybody walking into your little camp while you're waiting there. So out of the natural line of drift, look at crime areas. Your routes need to be, if you gotta go through a high crime area, uh, you need to know that because you might need to wait it out and go at night. Uh, you might need to wait till like three in the morning to cross that really dangerous area where most people are sleeping. Look at railroad tracks, active railroad tracks. Some of our railroad tracks aren't used in the United States. Uh, it, it might help you by traveling on the railroad tracks. If you ever walk railroad tracks, there it's very hard to walk them um, to get that right spacing of your feet so it's comfortable. So try it first. You might think, oh, I'm going to walk 60 miles on a railroad track. Trying to step between those railroad ties uh, really affects your pace and the distance you take each stride. It's very annoying. So practice that before you say, I'm going to walk a long ways on the railroad tracks. Um, trails. There might be some trails. Uh, there might be some... Uh, wilderness trails that you could jump on a wilderness trail and and hike through and get to where you need to go markers and spray paint i love this say i'm walking on route white as i walk on route white and i'm i'm walking it, you see all those signs in front of you on the back of that sign yes it is illegal so i'm not I'm not telling you to do anything illegal but this is in a grid down shtf event on the back of that sign Whatever your guys' symbols is, it could be a star, it could be whatever. Just go a little star in the corner or a little square. No one is going to see that. But if someone's looking for you in the sense of you're trying to find your loved ones and they get on your route, they start seeing those things, they know, hey, you're already there. Um, you could also, if you wanted to, take some spray paint. Do that same sign on the ground. 
it, it could be just a little circle with a, a, a one in it or two in it or three in it, whatever you want to want to do. Very helpful if they're coming to find you, your loved ones. All right, um, ham radio. The little Beifeng radios are awesome. They're cheap, they're affordable. Get a ham license. If you don't have a ham license, there's a lot of ways you can use that little radio. Um, I'm not gonna get into that right now. Cash. Carry cash, a few hundred dollars in fives, tens, twenties, even a few ones in there. That needs to be in your get home bag. Don't put it in your wallet because you'll be out one day spending money. You'll spend some, oh, I'll just spend a little bit of that bug out money or my get home money. You won't replace it and when the crisis comes, you'll have a lot less money in that wallet. Pistol rifle. What are you gonna carry? That's yours. For me, uh, if I'm traveling that, I want to be light. I don't want to be carrying a rifle. It's going to attract so much attention. Uh, so I would carry a concealable firearm. I carry a few magazine, extra magazines. That is for sure. So you got to come up with a plan. Pick your route. Loved ones need to be on the same page. They need to know what will happen if we lose comms. Also. You might lose the ability to call, but a lot of times you can still send messages. That's why that message has to be clear and precise. What route I'm taking. So work this out now. Do some dry runs with your loved ones. Uh, talk through this. Uh, next video I do on this will be what would you put in that bag to get you home? Two to three hundred miles. You're going to need some food. You're going to need some skills to make it home that far. So Kentucky Girl, thanks for the question. Hopefully this helps. Thanks for watching.